This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Well, I did. I am Stanley. I want to look around. Um, yeah, this office, uh, this office sucks. All right, about to step out of my office. It's, I'm a little scared. Oh, I did it. Take that, office boss. Oh. Oh my God. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Who farted? Classic. Who would leave a mug like that behind? Oh, man. Don't tell me they went to an office pizza party without me. That was my idea. Oh man, look at this. So bright, I can't even see. Oh my god. Terrible. Where the hell is everyone? Where the hell's the meeting room? I've been in this office. Whoa. What the? That's creepy. Here we go, if I had a desk job. Yeah, I hate Mondays. All right. Meeting room. I'm waiting for this guy to insult me. Oh man, check that out. All Everyone's back door is wide open. What goes on in here? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What? Um, okay, I'll, I'll play along, for now. Oh, no. oh, son of a bitch. I knew this would happen to me. <laughs> I knew this would happen to me. Listen to a voice in your head. Get stuck at your job. Oh, man. Everyone's computer screen is so bright. Damn. Damn. Damn! Oh, here we go. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Or, Steve wanted to read everything. Future was yesterday, tomorrow's now. Oh man, was there some kind of time warp? Can I jump? Nope. <laughs> Why would you need a jump button in the walking simulator? What does that say? Oh. Everyone's unique. Oh, what? I'm the most. Oh my god. Nice pie. We know Stanley loves the pie. Now let's keep going for you and I. Huh? Whoa! I can open a door! Awesome! 
Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Stanley wants to look around, bitch. Um, wrench. I might. I could use that. There was nothing here. Huh? No choice to make. No path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No Dude. reason to still be here. It's a closet full of stuff that I can't pick up. I think I should be in here. Oh, a broom! I've never seen that before. Baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least, if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> I like this game. <laughs> um, oh man, duct are tape. You, are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. <laughs> um, duct tape? Do I have to say anything else? Come on, you don't see that every day. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. It's the only room I can open. Take that, voice. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. <laughs> if I wanted to get nagged all day, I would get married. Why don't you shut your voice ass Sammy up? Sammy was oh. fat and ugly and really, really stupid. <laughs> he probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Oh, Stanley loves the party. Well, I'm staying in here then. This well, is... I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. Oh. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming, so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. Wow, voice, you're an asshole. Who does that? Who? Come on, maybe I've never seen this stuff before. My God. You know, I like to look around, you know. I like to explore when I play games, you know. Is, is, he, is he gonna go on? No? Huh? Yeah? No? Uh, okay. Ah. Second player, it's good to have you on board. <laughs> I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. Yes, we can. You too. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Ugh. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. <laughs> okay. We're good. We are good. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Uh, okay. We'll do what you say for now, voice. Can I open this door? Damn. Oh, his boss's office? Check this out. Nice. Don't shut. Nice. Executive bathroom? Oh, come on. You're going to tease me. What if I got to go? My boss's office, huh? Oh, sh Damn it. All right, let's 
find out what happens here. Okay, nothing. Anything in here? Of course not. Why would I be able to open doors? I don't know. Look out windows. These aren't windows. This place is a lie. Okay. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, eight, four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Oh my god. Really? Stanley just yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct oh, code by sheer luck. That's Amazing. Right. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. There's the voice. Oh my god. Oh man, come on. What's he what's happening? I'm scared. Oh man, this isn't good. I hate Mondays. Ah, oh, what the? F Anything else? Press buttons. Damn it, I'm pressing buttons. Nothing's happening. <laughs> oh my god. How'd you miss that button? Oh shit. Am I in Silent Hill? What the? Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Right? Where the hell do I work? What the hell do I do? Jeez. Stanley just shat his pants. Oh my god. It was dribbling down Stanley his leg. Walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. What? Uh, trap. <laughs> That's a trap. Oh. What the hell? Is my life a lie? Oh my god, I knew it. I press buttons all day. What the hell? Duh. The lights rose on oh, an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Uh, sure. Why not? Laugh collectively. <laughs> okay. Oh man. Well, I am Stanley, and I love to push buttons. I'm pushing buttons. Now the oh. jumped to life. Their true nature revealed. What? Each bore the number of an employee in the oh. building. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Oh my god, my life is a lie. I am just a number. Oh my god, I knew it all along. <laughs> Cody crybaby break. Oh, hey, a box. What's that do? <laughs> Look at all these TVs. Oh, there's a box. <laughs> God, I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> this mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? <laughs> You're hurting my feelings, voice. Oh my god. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? I know, it's like I'm playing a game. What the hell? A game within the game. The heart of the operation. 
Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. I would. Um. Okay. I, you know, I... I, I can, but... <laughs> Uh, do I want to? Um, well, I don't know, you know. I like big red buttons. Uh, yeah. Pretty tempting game. Oh. Mind controls idle. Um, okay. Do I want to control people? <laughs> well, maybe. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty. His obligation to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Uh, I, I guess, since I have to. Did I just break? What? Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes! Oh! He had won! He had defeated the machine! Unshackled himself from someone else's command! Freedom was mere moments away! And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. That's right, I'm selfish. I don't care how it happened. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin. The feeling of liberation. The immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Aw, I like a happy ending. Ooh. Ah, oh, back once again. You see, I did a very nice, easy playthrough. Now let's, you know, I'll try again. Why not? You know. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Meeting room. Does not sound boring. What else can I do here? Can't really open too many other doors. Hmm. I did a very vanilla play <laughs> playthrough, my friend. You know? <laughs> When oh. Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Now I did left last time, now we're gonna try the right. This was oh, not yeah. the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. That sounds like me. Oh, here we go. Ah. <sighs> Yes, truly a room worth admiring. Yes. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. <sighs> it's good to drink, even though I can't really drink. All right, let's uh, do this again. Yeah. But oh. eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Why? 
Nope. Oh, Stanley man. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Truly is. I must say, I don't like to listen. Oh. <laughs> I don't have a... Oh, man. Um... Look, nice. Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Oh? This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Oh. Oh. Fucking creeper. You don't know me. Um. Okay. I'm just trying to make... I don't want the vanilla... Play through again. Oh my god. Oh shit. That's her, Stanley. What? You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly. Oh no, 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 you can't. Did you just unplug the phone? Now, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. <laughs> no, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Damn As it. it. Comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Aww. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. Oh. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can no. educate you properly on safe decision making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. No. Oh. Choice. <laughs> it's the best part of being a real <laughs> person. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Stephen has a choice. Hey. He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third world nations. That's me, or Stephen. Or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 kilometer radius of his house. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike <laughs> here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, my goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. <laughs> Sounds like me. Oh, practice, what the? I'm talking about practice. Practice. Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant, and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. 
Awesome, I've been trained. Ah, what the fuck? Welcome back. <laughs> the... You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. <laughs> but not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. Oh. This way, please. Just unplug the phone. That's all I did was unplug the phone. What the hell? Oh my god. I like how the game is just pulling me by the ear. Oh, jeez. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we oh, can't man. have you jumping off the platform and dying. Damn it. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. <laughs> Son of a bitch. At my work, in real life, people don't make sense all the time. So this is what it's like to be like them. Aww. Derp. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Oh my god. I'm going all the way back. Oh my god. What the hell? Son of a bitch. <laughs> Hello? Oh. oh, man. Really? Almost oh. there. Oh my You'll god. take the door on the left, back to the correct ending. The story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Awesome. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. I already right. did it. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a oh, set of two open God. doors, he entered the door on his left. <laughs> nope. No! Why oh, do shit! That? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. I'm not rushing. Look at... Oh, man. <laughs> what? Oh, son of a... Did I do this? Nope. <laughs> nope. Oh. Ah, oh, man. Oh, I guess I have to, huh? I don't want to break the time-space continuum or whatever. Son of a bitch. You happy? Hey, voice man, you happy? Bitch. Uh, oh! Shit. Ruined. You, I can't believe, after everything we talked about, that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! Why? <laughs> For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? No. To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. No. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut no. the game down. I have to. I have to. No. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh. The hell? <laughs> Yeah. Oh shit. Oh. oh I'm, I'm here. I'm still here. Here in this pile of rubbish. With you. <laughs> you. Who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine and you run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? Mm -hmm. You just had to see? Yeah. Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Aw. Uh -oh. You're a bitch. My story. 
If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. Cry more. Oh, what happened? Is behave exactly oh. as Stanley would. That means choosing oh. responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Son of a... No! <laughs> no! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry... Oh, shit. <laughs> what? He's behaving exactly as Stanley would. Oh, come that on. means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just for... Oh, you're a son of a bitch. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. <laughs> you son of a bitch! <laughs> no! No! <laughs> You're a real motherfucker, <laughs> you know that? Oh, you fucking asshole! You're a bitch! <laughs> Fucking oh my god. Huh? Doesn't make noise. Interesting. Oh my god. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. It's locked. You're a little son of a bitch. <laughs> Uh, Coming oh. to the staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I can't go down. Oh my god. Oh, I already did this ending, you son of a bitch. Oh, son of a bitch. Oh. That's a little different. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up. But now, he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. <laughs> he drew a sharp breath, and then spoke the code. He did? Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! <laughs> Stanley spoke the code. <laughs> Light Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver. Right there on the wall. Kiss my ass. Yeah. How about that? I'm sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? No. Uh. Please speak the code into the receiver. Really? Does this work? Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. <laughs> this is a crucial step. <laughs> Night Shark 115, bitch. Okay, fine. You're not going to do it. Hey! But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I, I did! I you for this one single I thing. I did! Your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then oh. why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. What? You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. Are you mad? Whoa. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, what the he fuck? entered the door on his left. What? Am I watching someone play the game? Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Where's this voice? I'm gonna beat him up. I, I need you to make a choice. Oh! <laughs> I need you to walk through the door. What? Are you listening to me? You're a son of a bitch. Can you hear me? Is everything alright? No. Right? Stanley, this oh is my important. god. <laughs> the story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? 
Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. <laughs> Choose. Go. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. <laughs> I need this. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. <laughs> time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. Oh my god, that's creepy. <laughs> See if anything's different. Hey, we can go downstairs. Coming to a staircase, Yay. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Yay! Woo! What's this? Light! I love lights. Oh. I can't see what this says. Damn. Whoa. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment, Whoa. for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Right. Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, mm. Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, <laughs> he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined <laughs> himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. What? Then he imagined himself oh. soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. Whoa. It was so much fun, <laughs> and Stanley marveled <laughs> that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? Psychedelic. And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? Drugs. This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Aww. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. 
Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Stanley having a brain aneurysm? What? what? Oh my god. Oh my god, no! It's not okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Oh. Um. My dad. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. I'm glad I can make other people feel better about themselves. Don't forget, guys, I have an upload schedule. So, if you want to know what I upload and when it's going to be available, just follow the schedule I do and enjoy the videos.